that was Happy from Pharrell Williams, which is a theme tuned to Despicable Me 2. Um, tonight I'm with my two guests. Kirsty Dunleavy. Joe Denton. Both from Cheltenham Town Ladies Football Club. Uh, we're going to come on to them very shortly. I'm just going to give the briefest mention about uh, rugby. Gloucester lost 38-30 to London Wasps today. Uh, I can tell you no more apart from the fact they lost 38-30. And if you're a if you're a Grand Prix fan, which I'm sure a number of you are out there, uh, Lewis Hamilton's on pole position. Uh, the Chinese Grand Prix is on tomorrow on BBC One from 7:35 to 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you're interested in Grand Prix, I'm sure you some of you are. Um, please enjoy the race. Okay, last week we talked about what we one of the things we we're going to do on this show, which was we're going to have a uh, a local team of the week uh, and a local club of the week. So. We would we pick out uh, people would either tweet me, email me, uh, and I give I give them the opportunity to f to talk about their club, um, a chance to interview them, a bit of history, chance to promote their club, etc., etc. So today I'm really pleased that I've got uh, Kirsty Dunleavy, who's the first team captain of the Cheltenham Town Ladies Football Club, and Joe Lenton, who's the development team captain of the Cheltenham Town Football Club. So, ladies, let's talk about your club, shall we? Yes, I know a little bit more about this. Okay, good, excellent. <laughs> um, a busy, busy last month for your team, I understand. So what's been going on the last month? Um, well, development team, we got to a cup final, um, which unfortunately we lost the traditional English way on penalties. Um, but what was the score on penalties? Oh, I don't know. No, I can't remember. I've blanked it out. Okay. I can't remember it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the development team also won the league, but I think we won it um, by a point in the end. So, so it's been a pretty successful first season, really. So, um, and, and Kirsty, your, your team? Your yeah, first, first team. team. We've still got um, a couple of games left, but we're fighting very tightly at the top of the league um, in the South West Women's League. Uh, we got to the semi finals of the County Cup, where we faced Forest Green, obviously another strong ladies' team um, within the county. Unfortunately, we lost that game. Um, and yeah, just Cheltenham Town ladies, just promoting ourselves, getting out there a bit more. We've got lots planned for the future, so starting to look to next season now and what that can bring. Personally, the two of you, when did you start playing football? Um, I probably started playing when I was about six or seven, just growing up, like most of us do, started playing football with the boys. Um, I played in my primary school football team, which was, I was the only girl in that. Um, and then my mum actually started a team for me and a group of friends to, to enter a local league. So she set up and was the manager for a girls team that I was part of. Joe? Uh, I think I've, I've kind of, yeah, just started playing at school and with friends, really. Um, kind of realised from an early age I enjoyed kicking people, so <laughs> just kind of done it ever since, really. Um, so was that what got you interested in football itself, or was it watching the game? Or um, Yeah, I was watching it. My family are uh, quite a sporty family, all like football. Most of them support Man United. But uh, my mum was an avid Hammers fan, so Trevor Brookin in the heyday. Um, so yeah, she passed on to me really a real passion for it. Went to watch some games, watched a lot of it on TV, um, and supported our local team as well. Joe, um, yeah, I think my dad used to watch quite a lot of football, so I remember kind of watching it on TV and stuff. And um, I think when, when um, I was at school, we went on a, f a school trip to Bristol City, which was one of my first experiences of football. I think they played Walsall, so it was a thriller. <laughs> Do you remember the score? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> we had a little tournament in the changing rooms and stuff, and it was like the highlight of my life at the time. But it's all gone now. Okay. Um, just an interesting one from from my perspective. When you tell people you play football, do you get a good reaction from them? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, generally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and going on from that, do you think the perception of ladies' football has changed at all in the last few years? Definitely. Because they get a lot of coverage on. Uh, with the Ladies World Cup, uh, the European Championships, also yeah. with the Olympics and what have you. So, yeah, I think massively it's changed. I think everyone's really positive. Um, you know, male friends and things like that are really supportive of it, and I think it's changing a lot. Right from grassroots football, I think a lot more girls or women are getting involved in the game because of the coverage and the positive light that's been shone on women's football at a much higher level. Yeah, I think going back when when I was a kid and stuff, not many girls at all really played football, but now I think. A lot of girls that actually enjoy sport. It's probably one of their first, the first choices they make to actually play football over other things. So I think the Olympics really helped because the team did so well in that, and maybe the men's team being so poor kind of highlighted the women's team being even better. Really, so it was really good. 
Um, I think certainly from the, watching the Olympics, certainly itself, they got a lot of coverage. Obviously, they were live on TV. Yeah. Uh, they showed the full game, which was good as well, I think. so. And they, and they are very skillful players, aren't they? They are, they are yeah. very skillful players. I think people often compare the men's and the women's game. And yes, it is football, but I think that it's a different, it is a different game. And I think people need to remember that, you know, not to compare it, but actually just to appreciate it for what it is, that, you know, there's a lot of dedicated, committed female athletes out there that are training hard, playing for at a really high level for women's football. So on to your team, Chatham Town Ladies Football Club. Uh, what has changed about your club this year to have achieved the success you've, you've done? Um, I think it, hopeful success. I yeah, say. I think it started... Um, you know, the end of last season, we had a difficult season. Um, there was a lot of changes to be made in terms of um, we've set, we started a development team, for example, so with recruitment of players and promoting the club. Um, we set ourselves a kind of a, a long-term plan. So in terms of the professionalism of the club, um, that started through every player and through the management. So we had a really good pre-season or off-season and the last season into pre-season to start you know, at a much higher level, much more professional. So everyone was ready to go. I think that that really helped get the ball rolling for the beginning of this season for both the first team and the development team. Yeah, I think the fitness levels are really good. I think we're probably the two teams are probably the fittest kind of teams around. So I think that and the kind of a professional approach to everything has moved on to the next level. Really. Um, so just to so our listeners can can understand what you do, what what in the pre-season training? How much? When do you start for pre-season training? Um, we started in July. Quite early, wasn't it? Yeah, we didn't have m- much time off, and you know, again, the same this year. We had a lot of games that were cancelled due to the weather and things, so it pushes the season on and on. So we do have a little break, um, and then I think we, yeah, July, June, July time started doing um, pre, you know, really strong pre-season. We had um, a manager at the time who was a strength and conditioning coach, so that really helped, um, and that definitely tested us de- definitely tested commitment within the team but everyone pulled together and was in it for the same same reason really so the the sunny days that we were out there doing horseshoes around the pitch um really paid off well i'm sure people understand tell me what a horseshoe is go on <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah. uh it's a sprint basically so you just three sides of a, a square okay. sprinting yeah okay joe anything you noticed at the pre-season that you start obviously in july Anything change? Oh, you better give him a mention because he's tweeting this at the moment. So you're, the first manager of the season was... That was Ian Hutton. OK. He's Hello, Ian. Hope you're listening to the show. <laughs> what, what was the difference about Ian being manager that made you, have made you stronger and fitter? Um, it was a lot more organised. Um, and rather than just running for the sake of it, kind of there was everyone understood why we were doing certain things and, and could see the benefits. And um, I think it's shown through the rest of the season, really. Um, we built that kind of core strength then, which has carried us through because obviously the league's gone on for so long now. It's, it put down the foundations, really. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really important. Now, obviously, as captain of the development team, you won the league this year. Yep. That was tough, hard, easy? Um, it was a bit of a mixture, really. Some games were quite easy. There was quite a different levels, um, you know, some of the teams are quite good, some are quite poor. So um, in a way, it was quite good that we didn't just kind of trounce everyone because there were some really hard games where I think um, some of the younger girls learnt some kind of lessons because they've not played in a league before. So um, we had a couple of losses and stuff, but I think we took took a lot out of those and learnt for them, really. What's the difference, any difference between the development team and the first team, Kirsty? Well, in terms of our results and things like that of the just, season? Just the, the, maybe the, the games themselves. And the results, yeah, let's do all of it. So. Um, I think, as Joe said, a lot of the um, development team there, young girls that have come up maybe from, from youth football, um, it's their first sort of season in women's football, so I think that's really good for them to be able to step into that level. And what we've done in the first team, um, we've got some new players in from you know from other areas, which has been really good to support the development of the team. Um, but then we've looked at, at the late, later stage of this season to bring up some of the development team who are in a lot of cases you know experienced good women's footballers um, to come and support the first team as a, as a whole squad and that's a real ethos that we have in the club and I think that's something that's really positive is that we have a really good link and a pathway from the development team to the first team so it means that going on to the future seasons we can we can build and get better and stronger So how many games have you got left this season? We've got three And you're playing tomorrow I suspect? Tomorrow yeah we've got Stoke Lane away Okay, kick off at two o'clock. Okay, um, so you mentioned about the development team this year, uh, this season for the first time. What's next for Chatham Town Ladies? Um, well, we, we've got, like I said, we've got a long-term plan, and we want to keep 
keep the club going and building on the foundations as Joe said um, so what we're looking to do is build on the, the squads that we've already got so you know if there's any players out there that want to come and kick a football around with us and, and try it out then feel free to contact us um, but yeah so building the first team hopefully you know there might be a promotion place available so whether we go up to the league above same with the development team they're going to be going up so supporting the just building on what we've got and making it stronger um, and also we're looking at um, having a youth team so for younger girls out there maybe under 12 years old um, we're looking at setting that up using our, our coaches within the team um, and really building a, a long term kind of sustainable plan for the club So you mentioned that you may want some more players how could they get in touch with you Jo? Um, probably the best thing to do is um, they can contact us on Twitter so we're, we're at CT Ladies. Um, we've also got um, a website at ctlfc.com um, which has got all the contact details on there so yeah Twitter's probably the best thing um, I think we'd better mention your club managers or management I should say yeah definitely so perhaps you can tell us a bit about who's in charge and who does what and the rest of it well we've got um, Andy Liddle who is the chairman of our club um, really positive dedicated kind of member of the management been at the club for a couple of years now and really made a positive impact on on the club and really you know is really passionate about the about the club and that you know to have a male come in and really push for the club in a in a female football club is really really important so we are really grateful to Andy for kind of leading the way on that um at the moment we've got um two managers within the first team Andy Trout and Mark Hardcastle um again who come from a women's background in coaching they've come from uh, Long Levens so they've they started at the beginning of the year um, and again, we've we've got great results under those guys. So yeah, really positive. Joe, who's in charge of the development um, team? We've got Ben Hyatt as our manager. Um, he's kind of he's new to uh, women's football, really. So he's learning all the time. He's really, really keen, positive, and and wants to learn. Um, and I think we've we've stressed him out a few times this season. He's been running up and down the uh, <laughs> sidelines. He has lost a lot of weight recently. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's running up and down the sidelines. Yeah, <laughs> the stress we've caused him. But yeah, Ben's really, really uh, positive. So it's really good. So do you think it's a positive thing to have a, a male management team as such? Would you, you know, is that going around the other teams you play, do you see that as a common... Yeah, common it's, thing, it, it common is thriller? common, I think, in women's football. Again, I think it's just a percentage of, of people that go into coaching or management roles. It is ma mainly men. I quite like to see a lot more women girls getting into that role I think you do see it a little bit more you know look at Hope Powell for example as a role model for women going into that, that level so I think that's really good um, but yeah the majority is men but you know that I think that's a positive thing men have a really real good experience of football mm -hmm. they can bring a lot to the club um, as Joe said some people are quite new to the women's game and women's football and, and what it's like to con try and control <laughs> a group of uh, women but yeah it's challenging but it's been good at Cheltenham Town anyway I think we'll probably see more women coming into the sport as as the years go by really because I think maybe people our age and, and above are just starting out so maybe in a few years when they've got more experience they'll be doing the those kind of roles um, A lot of clubs that I, I see different, doing different things or whatever uh, obviously one of the things they're very that's important on their list of things they need to achieve is to get some sort of sponsorship now obviously there will be some sort of sponsorship available within Chatham Town Ladies I guess uh, what have you done so far to date and what if anybody wants to get involved how can they get involved in the sponsorship side um, there's, there's, again there's loads of stuff on our website which kind of highlights I think most players have got individual sponsors now so we, um, when we warm up we wear t-shirts with their logos on and stuff I think we've had a few companies contact us who want to kind of sponsor end of season awards um, but um, the biggest thing probably we've done this, this year is um, we've linked up with the No More Page 3 campaign um, there are a group based in London and, and um I think it was in a month we managed to raise uh, £10,000 through like, a crowdfunding and technique, really. So we had national press coverage. We were in The Guardian. Um, Kirsty was on the radio again. But there was loads, it, was, radio. It, it was manic. And we've got, our, obviously, our new kit with the logo on, which causes quite a stir when you walk around with it on. Yeah, it's good. In terms of, you know, the... the the sponsorship side of it I think it's just creating awareness of actually Cheltenham Town do have a ladies team I think it'd be nice to link up with a with a men's team a little bit more but as Joe said yeah having individual individual sponsorship can be really good because it's starting to link you know awareness within the county but also the first team we play in the southwest so we travel right the way down to to Truro um yeah so we cover the whole kind of region really so yeah, if anyone's got a team bus out there, yeah, get in touch. You need a mini bus. So give me your tweet handle again. Um, it's at CT Ladies. And the website? Uh, CTLFC.com.
Okay, we're going to have a little break now. We'll come back with some more talk with the two uh, ladies opposite me. We're going to do uh, have a song by Clean Bandit. I heard this on uh, Jules Holland on Tuesday evening, and I thought, well, we should put it on my on my playlist. It's so a good song. It's a good song. So it's con- it's called Rather Be, and it's by Clean Bandit. Clean Bandit with Rather Be. Enjoy that, ladies. I did we? like that. That's very good, that, wasn't it? A little dance. <laughs> <laughs> we try to be down with the kids on this show. <laughs> don't we? Um, just uh, another thing about foot- ladies' football. What do you think about the physicality of the game in comparison to the men's game? Do you think is it harder? Is it the same? Is it you know similar? I think it's the same. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, we go in for hard tackles anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, I think. We were just saying the other day, actually, watching the referee um, yesterday, I think referees are a little bit softer in the women's game, but I don't think the players want it to be like that, if I'm no, honest. I think you want a level playing field, don't you? And I think um, the f- sorry, go on. Sorry, I was going to say, I think the physicality is part of the reason why a lot of the women play it. I think they want to see that side of it, you know, the men's game's like that, so I don't think it should be any different for the women's game. So what do you think is the best thing about playing football? And you can preface that with the what do you think the best thing about playing for Charlton Town ladies is? Oh wow! Well. Uh, I think for me, playing football is just it's another great sport. You know, it's our national game. I think any boys or girls enjoy football, and I think you know, massive part of that is the kind of team morale that comes with it, the competition, the physicality. For me, it's you know, getting fitter, stronger to go out and play the game as as part of a team, play for each other, and do the best you can every game throughout the season. Yeah. yeah, probably the same really. But the che- you know cheesy thing, being with your teammates, um, um, and just yeah, it's a really good way of uh, staying fit. So and, you know, keeping fit, and you get to kick people. Well, I hope everybody's listened to this intently because it's been really interesting to talk to you. Thank you for coming in, ladies. Give us your Twitter handle again. It's at CT Ladies. And your website? CTLFC.com. Great, excellent. Well, as I mentioned last week on my first show, I- I'd like to put my guests at ease. So. We've got a little, another little section coming up called, called You'll Be Wanted to Know What I Had for Breakfast Next. So I've already told the ladies what to expect from this, so we'll hopefully we'll have some really interesting <laughs> answers from this them. This is where it all goes wrong. I know. <laughs> so, first off, uh, who is your sporting hero and why? Um, well, I, I couldn't really decide, so I kind of went... I said Jessica Ennis and Kelly Smith. Um, and the reason for that is just great female role models, great sports stars, obviously committed, hard-working... Uh, female athletes really Joe? Um, I probably don't kind of have, have a hero such anymore but when I was growing up it was Alan Shearer so um, not Did quite for Newcastle? Yeah <laughs> but I'm not quite as keen on him as a pundit so back in the day really it would be Alan Shearer OK so we're going to the next one I've got on my list is if you were having a dinner party which four sporting stars dead or alive would you invite? I'll let you go first Joe. OK mine's a random bunch as you might expect um, I've got Joey Barton for entertainment purposes and he could tweet what's happening and generally abuse people okay um i've got andy murray for the jokes obviously um david beckham because you've got to invite david beckham and finally i've gone for hulk hogan now joe's got a little secret she wants to tell us about you're a big fan of wwe is that right i love it yeah (laughs) my uncle used to be a wrestler so i've kind of got it in the blood i reckon i should do it really but i haven't found an opportunity because it's, it's obviously a, you know, a very important sport, obviously. It's, it's big in entertainment. In, is it entertainment or a sport in America, would you it's say? It's sport entertainment. Sport entertainment, OK. Yeah. <laughs> well put. <laughs> right, Kirsty, same question for you. Um, I think Bex would have a double booking, because I think I'd we definitely have on a different like day, though, couldn't we? Yeah. You'd have um, to stay in for two nights, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, not a problem. Um, I'd go Hope Powell, uh, Sue Barker. <laughs> I think you've got her in there, yeah. Um, Rebecca Adlington, the swimmer. But I did, I question marked Claire Bolding because I definitely invite her to a, uh, a dinner party. But I'd love to have a sit and chat with her, but she's not actually a sports star as such. Well, she did ride a horse. So she, she did, did she yeah. Did, yeah. She, she, okay. she can come, she qualifies. I think Hope Powell would go out then, bring Claire Bolding in. Okay. Definitely, yeah. Okay. Uh, right, next question. Let's have a look from my list. Best sporting occasion you've been to and why? 
Ooh, mine's going to be um, probably the Newcastle Liverpool match. So you might like that one, Graham. A couple of I think it was a couple <laughs> of seasons ago when we finished fifth, when we beat them two 0 Andy Carroll came back, dived, um, got jeered. I think Luis Enrique ended up in goal, and it was the one where um, Kenny Dalglish stormed on the pitch and. Stephen Gerrard told him to get off. It was like he was taking his dad off the pitch, told him to clear off. So that was quite entertaining. That's good. Um, and for me, it would have to be the final of the um, women's football at the Olympics, being in Wembley Stadium to nearly max capacity. I think that was definitely an amazing experience. And I've, we're running a bit of time, so I'm going to ask you quickly who would play you in a film of your life? Okay, Joe, for, you can I'll go, go first. first on this one. Um, I've gone for the obvious choice on this one. I've gone for Sandra Bullock. But Sandra Bullock at the start of Miss Congeniality. We had a chat earlier, and I think I'd have to be Sandra Bullock at the end of it. Because <laughs> me and Joe was a bit, bit of a thing about that. Okay. Well, we won't go into why. Watch the we? film. Okay, I'll watch uh, the film. Yeah. Well, I hope you've had a good time tonight. And I think that, uh, as I said to people last week on my first show, that um, we'd like to hear from sports clubs in the area. Come onto the show. You can talk about the, your clubs. You can talk about what you want to try and achieve. Obviously, what to get new members or. Uh, just to tell people what you do I think is a good thing and uh, hopefully you enjoyed yourselves ladies we have thank you very much for having us no problem at all Um, next week I've got uh, an interview